We're uh, recording mathematical induction, okay? So uh, Austin and Minda, and who else is missing today? Reed. And Reed, if you get this, send me an email, and I'll give you an extra participation point. Isn't that a good thing? Okay. 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 All right. No, just today. That's all right. Tell me something about mathematical induction. All right. So here we go. So this this is a process called mathematical induction, and it is a process in which you prove some of these formulas and some other things. So so these are. Um, basically those formulas that I gave you. So this is the sum of one plus two plus three plus four, and we came up with this formula on that summation sheet, right? This is the sum of consecutive numbers, the sum of all n's, you come up with this formula. This is the sum of consecutive terms squared, and we came up with this formula. This is the sum of consecutive terms cubed, and we came up with this formula, and this is the sum of consecutive terms uh, to the fourth power, and this is a formula. I don't think I put this formula on your sheet. But basically, mathematical induction is a way to prove that something is true. And uh, the process that you do to do that is first show that the statement is true for n equals 1. We're going to do this one after we do this one, okay? And then show that it's true for some natural number k. I'll show you what the, or assume that it's true for some natural number k, okay? And then you're going to try to prove that it's true for the next natural number, k plus 1. So I'll kind of show you what I mean by that, okay? So we're going to do this one first together. It's really not that bad. It's just kind of confusing how it, uh, how it works. And there's some algebra involved. And I think it's kind of cool, okay? So, so what this formula is, show that this um, following statement is true for all natural numbers. Okay, so the first thing you do is show true for n equals 1. So show true, it's kind of like a algebraic proof for n equals 1. So for n equals 1, you just, so that means that the sum of the first one terms in this sequence so this is the first term, right? And then you want to show that that is equal to 1 squared. Is that true? OK? Because yeah. this is the first term right here. This is n equals 1, 2, 3, et cetera, right? And so if I plug in 1, so if I want to find the sum of the first one term, I would plug in 1 in here. And this is the sum of the one first one term, right, which is just one, and then I plug in one in here, and I show that that's true. So I'm done with part one. I'm done with part one, okay? Now, just to show you that this is true, what's the sum of the first two terms? Four. Four. So if I plugged in two in here, what do I get out? Four, right? And if I plug in three in, what's the sum of the first three terms? Nine. Nine, and if I plug in three in here, I get out nine. So that's kind of what that... So that's what that formula is saying, right? Is the sum of the sum of consecutive odd terms, right? Starting with one is given by by this formula. So we're kind of trying to show that this formula is true. Okay. So the next step is assume true. Yes, sir. Uh, so like I get what you're saying, but I don't just get I, I don't get like why you'd ever need to be able to show that. Because if you're doing a mathematical proof to show that something is true, it's deductive reasoning. You're showing okay, so that's what we're that, yeah. So you're it's like you know in geometry we did some geometric proofs. So you're using deductive because you you see a pattern. Okay. So remember from geometry when you see a pattern, that's inductive reasoning, and you say to say, oh, it looks like if I add up the first four terms, I get four squared, right? But then you want to algebraically prove that that's always true. Yeah. Okay. So uh, inductive is where you take prior knowledge and make an assumption, right? Right. Deductive right. And deductive is where you actually show that to be true. Okay. Okay. Assume true for n equals k. So we're gonna assume 
Okay, so what I do with this is I plug in k in here. So assume that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot, 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 and then I plug in k in here for n. 2k minus 1 is equal to k squared. So we're going to assume true. We're going to assume that this is true. That 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot, 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 2k minus 1 equals k squared. Okay? Now, this is the tricky part that people uh, don't get. Show, show it's true. It's true for n equals k plus 1. So, this is what I do. All right? I write down. Um, if I could go here, okay? So k plus 1 is going to look like this. 1 plus 3 plus 5 H plus... What? Yes, it should. It, should show that it, it is. is. Yeah, it's a conjunction. It conjunction. It contraction. That no. It is. It is. It's a contraction. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we learned some language arts on. Okay. Plus dot dot dot. Oh, you're right. Okay. Plus plus two k minus one. Plus this is where it gets kind of tricky. Plus the next term would be two times k plus 1. So now what I'm doing is I'm plugging in k plus 1 in here for n. Okay? 2k plus 1 minus 1 like that equals what goes in here for n plus 1. Or excuse me, for n. k plus 1 squared. Okay? And I'm going to show you what why this works. Okay? So here's the trick. Two, okay, so, shh, come on. So, what I did is I put k plus 1 in here for n, because that is the next term. So, up until this point, it looks just like that with a k, but the next term after that, right, would be 2k, 2 times k plus 1 minus 1. And so, I'm going to show that this is equal to k plus 1 squared. Now, what you do, since I assume that this is true, right here, see this? I can do a little substitution. See, up to here, this is exactly the same as this. So what I could do is take that k squared and plug that k squared in for this big chunk of stuff. So I'm going to say that that is equal to k squared. See? Okay, because I assume that this is true. So I can say, okay, if this is true, then I could call that k squared. Sorry. Um, it's my, uh, it must be my own. All right. So anyway, so now I can rewrite this as k squared plus, I'm going to use the distributive property on this, and I get 2k, 2k plus 2 minus 1 equals, and then I'm going to FOIL this out. Okay? And when I FOIL this out, I get k squared plus 2k plus what? 1. Okay? And now, if I combine like terms, if I combine like terms, if I combine like terms, how come it's not going down? <laughs> okay? It froze. <laughs> Just when I'm in the midst of a captivating lecture, okay? If I combine like terms, I get k squared plus 2k. What's 2 minus 1? 1 equals k squared plus 2k plus 1. And now I'm done. Okay? So what I showed is that the left side is equal to, uh, is equal to the right side. Okay? So first again, what you have to do is you have to let n equals 1 to show that it's true for the first term. Then you assume it's true for k. 
then you then you go up one more term past k, and then you uh, and then you use out then you use that substitution, and then use algebra to simplify and show that both sides are equal. Okay. Where did you get so the k squared from the left side? Where did I get what? Where did you get the k squared from the left side? Yeah. This k squared? Yeah. Um, I, so this whole thing, right, is equal to k squared. So I substituted k squared in for that whole thing. I just distributed through this. Okay? So we're going to do another one. All right? We're going to do another two if we have time. So the next one, okay, so that so that the following statement is true for all natural numbers. Oh, we did that one, didn't we? Did we just do that one? Oh, we don't want to do it. You want to do it again? Oh. Okay. So show that the following two is true. So this is that formula. I used it. I used this formula this morning when I was doing my swim workout, and people were very impressed. Okay, because we did. Because uh, we did. Um, well, I didn't exactly use this formula. I use the. Uh, I use this formula right here. Sum of a sequence. Anyway, I'll talk about that later. So um, anyway, so for this one, first thing we do, shh, hey, people in the background, stop talking. Or show, show true for n equals one. Show true for n equals one. So what I do is I, so the one is the first term, right? So the sum of the first one term is that equal to one times one plus one, because you're looking to over 2. Is that true? Yeah. What's well, 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2? One. 1. So I've shown it's true for the first term. Right? Okay? Now I'm going to assume assume that 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 k plus k equals k times k plus 1 divided by 2, right? What's the need to change? I have a quick question. What's the need to change for the end of the case so that, you know, you're substituting in for something? You know, you're substituting in for n, okay? So that the k, you're substituting k in for n so that when you plug in k plus 2, it's not confusing. Did you just plug in plus 2? Yeah, I guess you could, but it's kind of... Okay. No questions yet. Let me just finish. Okay. Show true that one plus two plus three plus dot 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 k plus what's the next term gonna look like? K plus one, right? That's all that goes in there for the next term would be k plus one, right? Equals now here's here's kind of why, John. Because you want to plug in, because it gets confusing if you're plugging in. Not yet. No, we will. Okay. Equals k plus 1 times, so you have to plug in k plus 1 in for per n, right? Plus k plus 1 plus 1 over 2. Did you follow what I did? No. I, so I plug in k plus 1 per n. And then I plug in k plus 1 again for n so plus in, 1. So you plug in k for n or k plus 1 for n? No, in the second case I'm plugging in, so show true for n equals k plus 1. That's what I'm really doing, okay? So I'm plugging in k, I didn't write that. Yes? What is, what is it k plus k plus 1 in the start? Here? Shouldn't it just be k plus 1? No, because I'm going, I'm, because the next term after this term would be the k plus 1 term. Isn't it just, it just k plus 1? Parentheses doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay, parentheses. Sure, if you're putting in k plus 1. Is he the rest of all those k plus 1? What? Uh, plugging in k plus 1 for k? Yeah, but. You know what I'm just saying? It's like the top one. The unit of this. The unit of this. Yeah, but 
the next term, so it's going to go up to k, then it's going to go up one more to uh, k, yeah, so k is what goes up to the Right. Okay? So it doesn't matter. It would mean the same thing to put it at. But I want to leave this here because I see that that is exactly the same as this. You see? Okay? That's why I could write it as plus k plus 1, but then you wouldn't see that this is exactly the same as this. Okay? So now I do this substitution and I take this and I plug it in here for this expression. So I'm going to take two. I'm, I'm going to take k times k plus 1 over 2 and plug it in over here. So now when I do that, I get k times k plus 1, k times, sorry, k times k plus 1 over 2 plus a lot of k, okay? k plus k plus 1 is 2k plus 1. Can I do that? You're okay with that? 2k plus 1 equals this thing, k plus 1 times k plus 2, right? I combine these two ones over 2. Now guess what I do? How can I get rid of these twos? That right. just becomes algebra, okay? Oh, why did it do that? Don't do that. How come it's doing that? Okay, I want to go down and I want more paper. Yeah, more paper. Oh well, good enough. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply everything by two. Okay. On the left side, shouldn't the K be included? So you, you combine one plus, so you're saying one plus two plus Oh, three. you're right. I messed up. Yep. Okay, so John told me that I messed up. Thank you, John. Otherwise, it would have been clustered. Okay? So this thing is equal to this, right? So that's just plain old k plus one. So make sure you change that. Now I'm going to multiply everything by two. When I multiply everything by two, this two goes away, that two goes away. And I do have to multiply this by two, right? When I multiply by 2, I have to multiply this part by 2, right? Because this gets multiplied by 2, this gets multiplied by 2, this gets multiplied by 2, and that cancels out, right? So, so that 2 cancels out when I multiply everything by 2, okay? And I get that k times k plus 1 plus, I distribute this through, k, 2k plus 2, equals, and now I'm going to FOIL this, okay, k plus 1 times k plus 2. You know how to FOIL that? I get k squared plus 1k and 2k makes how many k's? 3k plus 2. And I'm almost done, okay? All I have to do is multiply this times this, k squared plus k plus 2k plus 2. How many k's do I have all together? 3. 3 and k. So I get k squared plus 3k plus 2 equals k squared plus 3k plus 2. And then I'm done. Okay? So what I just proved is that formula. This is what mathematicians do. Okay? Yes, sir. I have one more. Okay. Not that hard, actually. You just have to follow a process, okay? And I explain this. Whoops! I explain this way better than I used to, because there's a, a factor of two in there, right? So I can divide it by two, and I would get three to the k, right? Okay? Right? This is divisible by two because there's a two there. Okay? Um, homework. Oh, for those of you who aren't here today, whoops. Yeah. For those of you who aren't here today, can I stop this somewhere? For yeah, no, it's down on donuts. Okay. For those of you who aren't here, you missed out on the donuts. Okay. Just kidding, but you're having more fun at Disney World. That's your homework. There you go. 1, 3, 5, 6, 13, 19, and 22. Try to do them all, right? We'll and remember, on Tuesday, you'll see me on Monday. You won't see me on Tuesday. 
because, oh, because Tuesday you just have your oh, and don't forget that your ACT practice packet Ooh, is due Monday. on Monday. Okay, Ooh. with some work shown, I'm going to post all the answers today or tomorrow, so you can see. Um,